So we're going to take a look then at two uh, brain circuits that have a lot to do uh, with affect regulation, the HPA axis and the anterior cingulate amygdala circuit. And we're going to do each one of these one at a time. Uh, one of my clients gave me this normal just to set in on the washing machine. So first we're going to talk about what's normal, uh, and, and then we're going to talk about pathology, okay? Okay, now this guy, uh, this is not an anxiety disorder. This guy is scared, okay? Uh, he may be stupid, but he doesn't have a psychiatric disorder. So anyway, we're going to use him as an example. This bull is chasing him, and he's got to get the heck out of there as fast as possible. So the HPA axis then, uh, and I'll use my little arrow here. Uh, where is it? There we go. Okay, so in this case, the guy's seen danger in the environment, and that's going to be processed by the brain. And last week we talked about the dual uh, brains, in a sense, dual or, or parallel processing, the cortex and the amygdala. This is true in animals as well as in, in mammals as well as, as human beings. But anyway, uh, the amygdala and, uh, let's say that the amygdala and the cortex agree. Yeah, I'm going to die if I don't get it out of this corral. So it, it sets off a, a significant uh, you know, reaction, the sympathetic nervous system is the immediate, uh, you know, sending out these nerve cells to almost every part of the body and in a split second dumping massive amounts of norepinephrine uh, out in, into all parts of the body and this causes immediate increase in heart rate, respiration changes, and in us humans also sweaty palms. So that's instantaneous. This one falls on the heel, so just a little bit, it takes a little bit longer to kick in. And here's what happens then. And that is the, uh, the H in the HPA is the hypothalamus, okay? And what it does is it releases CRF, which is corticotropin releasing factor. <clears throat> now, I've highlighted this because this is a particular molecule that is going to be, uh, we'll see, is going to be very important, so we'll come back to it uh, later on. But here, uh, keep in mind, we're talking about just normal functioning, okay? This guy is trying to save his life. And so corticotropin releasing factor, well, it kind of sounds like what it does, it's a releasing factor. It releases from the pituitary gland this hormone ACTH. And this is adrenocortical tropic hormone, but you don't really need, even need to know that. Uh, ACTH is the name that most people use. But let's talk for just a moment about the word tropic. And it comes from the Greek, and it means to feed to put, give to somebody or something. And so what's happening here is this uh, tropic hormone is directed at feeding, not really feeding, but activating the adrenal cortex. So adrenocortico, uh, that's the adrenal cortex, uh, tropic hormone. So these, these you know, abbreviations actually do make some sense. I don't remember if I talked about this last time or not, but I'll, I'll, if not, I'll repeat myself. The adrenal gland really has two main parts to it. The first one is the adrenal medulla. And the adrenal medulla is the core of the adrenal gland. And this is where input from the sympathetic nervous system, so it's lightning fast, causes the release of adrenaline into the bloodstream and also norepinephrine. So, so uh, we have the immediate sympathetic response, which is everywhere in the body. A little tiny bit after that, it, it, the uh, adrenal medulla is dumping adrenaline and norepinephrine in circulation, so it takes a while to reach the different parts of the body, okay? You're relying on circulation, so this sort of tsunami of stress hormones is coming uh, probably 10 seconds or so after that initial uh, sympathetic response, okay? But in this diagram, we're talking about the adrenal cortex, and the adrenal cortex actually is about 90% of the adrenal gland. And, and cortex like the, it means bark, like the bark of a tree is the outer part of the adrenal gland. That's where ACTH has its impact. Pardon this moment. <clears throat> okay, so what happens then is ACTH, uh, when it gets down there to the adrenal cortex, is going to activate cells to release glucocorticoids into circulation. And so throughout the rest of what I'm talking about today, uh, I'm going to just talk about cortisol. It's not the only glucocorticoid, but it's the main glucocorticoid uh, in human beings. So then it, that gets dumped into circulation, and it goes everywhere as well. Now let's look at the time again. Because the pituitary puts ACTH into circulation, that's going to take 10 seconds or so 
to, uh, to get down there to the adrenal gland, okay? And then the adrenal glands uh, dumping cortisol in circulation and so have it go everywhere in the body. It's going to take you know, a little bit of time. So again, this is a somewhat of a delayed response. Probably doesn't matter that much, but, but this is a system that kicks in uh, after a while. So if this guy gets out of danger in three seconds, this is not going to get activated very much. This particular pathway, the HPA axis, however, uh, kicks in a little bit later, and that's really important if the person's going to have some sustained stress reaction. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll just use an animal example, let's say a gazelle running away from a lion. Uh, it's not going to last three seconds, it probably won't last more than won't last more than a couple of minutes, but all the same, it's going to be more prolonged than uh, what this guy is experiencing here with the, with the bull. And by the way, I'm turning off my cell phone here because it's making noises. Yes, man. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, cortisol goes everywhere uh, because it's being distributed by the, uh, by the circulatory system, and it does three things in particular that are very uh, uh, important, highly functional. One is, uh, it dumps, it frees up stores of glucose and dumps it into circulation. And so if you're running away from something, you're going to need a ton of energy and, uh, and for your muscles and your heart and brain. And so it, it makes available immediately a lot of glucose in circulation. Now, let me stop for just a moment and say something. We'll get back to the slide in just a moment. The, this particular part of the fight or flight response can certainly get activated by truly dangerous situations, okay? Uh, like the, the bull chasing this guy. However, the problem is it's been estimated that most human beings these days are having between 20 and 30 uh, activations per day of this fight or flight response. It's not as intense as it would be if you were uh, about to get killed, but still it's getting activated between 20 and 30 times a day. Now, if somebody has this happen, generally they don't jump up and start running uh, or they, they don't stand up and start fighting with somebody. Uh, People are usually when they're anxious, uh, just you know, are very, very stationary, and so what happens is there's this repeatedly during the day dumping large amounts of glucose into circulation, but you're not using the glucose, and you know what that can lead to? Type two diabetes. Okay, everybody with me on that? So let's go back to the slide. The other thing that that cortisol does that is a part of facilitating fight or flight response. It is to increase heart rate. And you've got to have increased heart rate, uh, increased blood pressure, and so forth, uh, getting blood and oxygen to every part of the body as you're in, in the midst of this uh, you know, really uh, uh, potentially quite dangerous situation. The third thing that cortisol does, though, is it comes in and it, 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 in a major way shuts down the stress response. And let me go back here for just a moment. Cortisol is going to go to two different brain areas. The first one is going to be the hippocampus. And, and when it activates the hippocampus, if you'll take a look here at the little arrow, there, there are tons of receptors in the hippocampus for cortisol. Then what it does is it activates nerve cells here that come down this pathway and shut off the HPA axis. Now, this is a great example of top-down control. Let's take a closer look here. Particular receptors that get activated in this brain structure are referred to as glucocorticoid receptors, and I'll just call them GRs for, you know, practical way of, of you know talking about this. Okay, so here we go. The hippocampus is just loaded with GRs. Okay, and and so cortisol binds to these receptors, and that's what causes then the activation of nerve cells that then inhibit the HPA axis. Okay and it shuts us down. Now, if there's ongoing stress or danger, let's say the, the bull is chasing this guy all around the place and the brain is saying, wait a minute, I'm still in danger, then it's gonna get reactivated again and again and again. But in, in a real way, a good, good way to think about this is that uh, here we have the accelerator and over here, oops, excuse me, over here we have the brake, okay? But once a person perceives I'm now no longer in danger, then it will shut this down and that's good because you don't want to keep dumping glucose into the system, obviously, and you need to start settling down. 